Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Randy, before we get into this fight coming up on June 1st, UFC 302, um, I just wanted to ask you about uh, that, uh, what is it, the little office picks? You know what I mean? I just seen one that you did. I know you've been doing a bunch of them with, like, celebrities and stuff. Like, how is it working with celebrities that are not fighters? You know, because fighters are celebrities, too. Um, The tiny office. You're talking about the tiny office. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's tiny office picks. It's cool working with with a lot of uh, celebrities. You know, it's funny. They're just... It's the same like mm-hmm. the fighters, man. People are just people at the end of the day, you know, and uh, some people are cool. Some people are assholes. But for, for the most part, everyone that I've worked with and I had the privilege of working with, they were like, they were like good people, man. Just great people to work with. Just mm-hmm. great energy, you know, and um, just genuine people. You know what I mean? It's funny. So even after we work, I keep a rapport with them. So like, it's like we talk about fights or, you know, they'll sh- I'll shoot them a message here and there, you know, so it's cool. It's cool. Seems like they have like pretty good knowledge of fighting too. Like Action Bronson knew about Pride. Like I didn't well, expect action, that. Action is a, he's 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 an MMA fan through and through. Like okay. he's he knows his shit. He's been watching MMA since Pride days. Since he knows the game. Okay. He's a huge okay. MMA fan. So <laughs> yeah, dudes like that. Uh, they, it's easy to work with because they know what's up already. You know, and he's New York, yeah. so it was just an automatic connection. Not only is he from New York, he's Queens. You know, when I came yeah. from Jamaica, I moved straight to Queens. I still live in Queens, so it's yes. you know, so that that connect was easy. You know, so he he's the man. Action is cool as hell. Yeah, man, it seems like it. Um, yeah, let's move on to uh, the fight coming up, man. June first, UFC three hundred two, New Jersey. You go from the kung fu stylist to the capoeira. You, legit, like you're doing some street fighter shit. You know, what are your thoughts on uh, Zaleski and his fighting style? Oh man, Zaleski's tremendous. No, I think I think he's tremendous. I think he's dangerous because he's been around for so long. That's that's his thing. He's been around for so long, and he's fought you know, who's who with a division, man. He's been through the and he has some names on his resume, you know. So I respect him. I know he's dangerous, um, but you know it's the same treatment, different patient. You know, it's like I'm I'm gonna go in there and, and do what I need, what needs to be done. You know, what I mean, we broke him down. It's kind of short notice, I guess. But uh, you know, we've been preparing, you know, and um, his style is a it's a unique style, you know. But I don't think that is nothing that I don't think I'll be able to deal with, you know. Yeah, Zaleski, you know, a lot of people thought he was kind of on his uh, way down the division. You know, what I mean, there's guys going up, there's guys going down, there's guys staying kind of put. He, a lot of people thought he was going down the division. He fought Renat Fakardinov, who had a little bit of hype, and they fought to draw. Dude. I thought. He fought really well in that fight. I was surprised. What'd you think of it? I agree. I agree. His ability to stay off the off the um off his back. He fought off a lot of hard uh wrestling positions that a lot of other people would have just accepted. Um he did a lot of good things in those exchanges that, you know, you don't really Am I frozen? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see. Oh, all right. I thought I was, I'm frozen on my end. But um yeah, it's all yeah, good. he did a lot of a lot of good things. A lot of good things that you wouldn't really not that I wouldn't expect, but you would see a lot of guys at the mid or lower level, you know, wouldn't have the answers to, and he did have those answers. And um, it's what to ex- what you expect from a, a veteran, you know what I mean? Someone that used to be ranked, you know, he's a high caliber guy. And um, I expect nothing but the best from him. And you see it, and you saw it in that fight. Even that front kick at the end, you know, he stays dangerous throughout the entire fight. His cardio is not bad. He pushes the pace. He's durable. Um, I'm prepared for a war. In, in your last fight against uh, Muslim Salikov, first round knockout, what did you see in that fight that allowed you to like execute that combination that you you laid them out with? Oh, that's when I was talking to my coach. I was like, I see it, I see it. Um, Muslim, man, Muslim is a tremendous athlete. And with him, my game plan was different. You know, obviously people are always trying to kick my legs because I'm so tall and I have a deep boxing stance so people think that they can just chop my leg. That's the game plan. Right? That's the obvious game plan. And with him, I knew he had a spinning hook kick and a spinning back kick as well that was dangerous to the liver. So I, to get away from that, I had to move to his power side, which is his right hand, because he spins off the other way. So I had to challenge that right hand. I had to challenge that power. And I didn't mind challenging it because that's something I, we work a lot just normally, challenging that hand. Because, I mean, if I can disarm a jab, 
I'm going to see your overhand right coming a mile away. I'm 6'3", with great boxing. I got good eyes. I'm going to see anything you do off that right side, I'm going to see it. So I don't mind moving into that side specifically for this fight. And um, we knew stepping to that side and just occupying him with jabs, anything I threw down the middle was going to land, you know. And uh, we, we drilled it and drilled it and drilled it. You can even see I did a video of me backstage actually doing that exact combo. You know what I mean? And we just kept it simple. My coach was just like, yo, simple. Just the one, two, the one, two will do him. Trust me, the one, two will do him. One, one, two, even the one, three, two. He said, just end it on that two. It's going to put him away, you know, because you got a lot of power in that right hand that they haven't seen yet. So we just drilled it, drilled it, drilled it. Yeah. And it just, it was there. They called for it. And I was like, all right, I see it. Now, I want to rewind to your first finish in the UFC. Do you remember when that happened? Do you remember 2016? Eric Montano, third round oh, guillotine choke. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't realize I suffered an asthma attack in that fight, bro. What? Yeah, I suffered an asthma. I had mold poisoning, and this was crazy. And then it took it took a few years for it to get out of my lungs because mold is a bacteria that when you try to get rid of it with antibac. The yeah. first doctor I went to, they try to give me antibiotics, right? And it, it wouldn't die mm -hmm. from the antibiotics, right? They actually got stronger. And then I, they thought it was just my asthma. So they prescribed me with the the, uh, the pump. And, you know, that's a, that's a cortisone. That's like a steroid, right? So it's mm -hmm. also feeding off. And it just got bigger. It was spreading throughout my lungs and shit. It was bad. I was fucked up for a minute. And then um, I ended up uh, finally, what I had, they, when they figured it out, I did the x-ray on my chest and started to see. And they, they, I had to move out of the basement that I lived in at the time. And um, and just started taking like just herbal shit, you know what I mean, and, and and staying away from certain foods and shit like that, and it just slowly went away. But in that fight, that was before we even knew. So in that fight, mm. I I was exhausted. I was so tired. Mm. I was crazy tired. And then um, yeah, we pulled off the the guilla ten finger guillotine, that ninja choke, um, yeah. in the what in the third round, got it done. Yeah, yeah, and and I remember in the post fight. This is when John Anik had hair. Uh, yeah. you, you, you're you saying that, uh, that man, I was, I, they tell me I lost the first and second round. It was a comeback victory, man, especially with the, with the asthma attack. When did it happen? It happened, it happened in like in the first. I think like in the middle of the first, I came back. You can, if you watch the tape, I go back to my corner. I'm like, oh, I can't breathe. I, can't, I couldn't get a breath to come in. I just couldn't. I was just like shallow. I couldn't get a deep breath. It was just shallow and I was dying. And then, then, the speech that my coach gave me it was just like I, I would just, you know, they say the the candle shines as bright as like right before it goes out. I just, I just mm -hmm. ran at him. It was that jump kick and just got a hold of him, and then he just happened to present me with his neck. I just locked onto it. Do you remember when um, damn, what was that heavyweight's name? The one that played football, uh, Hardy, Hardy. when he pulled out the when he pulled out the the inhaler yeah. during the <laughs> bonehead move, man, that was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, that was tough. To like, I remember watching it. Like, I'm like, no. Because <laughs> I thought, I remember going through that. And I was like, yo, can I have, for my next fight after that, so I was like, I had my inhaler in my, in my, uh, in my bag. I had to like yeah. uh, bring it, speak it to the, to the USADA and the commission mm -hmm. and all that shit. And then we ended up just like, yo, fuck it. Don't even use it, man. Don't risk it. So to use it in, a, in a cage is wild. That's mad crazy. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It is what it is. Training camp, man. And and also your your coaches, dude. I don't think your coaches get enough credit. You've been working with those guys for a long time. And and you know, you mentioned it last time that you you you've been growing up in the UFC. Like, who are your coaches? Who is the guy sitting in the corner? Cause I don't I actually I don't really know that's, any of those that's guys. My secret weapon. Everybody thinks they need to go to these big camps and these giant mm -hmm. camps with these cause these guys with a bunch of fighters that train each other and the coach just latches on to the one that rises to the top, pulls a little miss, and they think that I've been with my guys since, you know, obviously I train with other coaches too and, and travel and, and cross train, but my guys, Nardu Debra, um, Tyrone Credle, Matt Cully, mad scientists, mad scientists. Um, if you look up uh, Nardu, Sensei Nardu, a wealth of knowledge. I mean, he's a Henzo Gracie black belt for years, been a black belt for years. Um, He's fought, been a world champion, ring of combat. Um, he's just so accomplished. And even in other martial arts, not just fighting, so many other arts. He's just a real life martial artist. And I just wish people got a chance to sit with him and speak with him 
because he's 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 a gem he is a hidden gem and i'm just happy that i actually i'm kind of a little bit selfish that i got to have him to myself throughout the years and i had so much i was blessed and fortunate enough to have so much one-on-one time with him as he just built me not taking on any fighters other fighters maybe one or two here and there very selective and just pouring into me man and i'm blessed and i've been blessed you know and tyrone credo amazing boxing coach you know what i mean incredible another wealth and a guy with so much wealth and knowledge that everything that you see that i'm doing all the shit that those clean strikes that i throw the way that i move that's that's ty ty credo right there you know what i mean and the mind behind it nardu man it's uh yeah you guys have you guys have a bond and also like i noticed that you know you mentioned that you do cross train those guys uh, you know, they they allow you to do that as your as as their as your coaches, right? Which it's, it says a lot about the bond that you guys have. Absolutely. One thing is coming up, right? My coach, because we was always one on one, he knew he wasn't like, oh, no, you got to train. It wasn't an ego thing. You got to train with me, and you can't train with that guy. It was like he brought me and introduced me and gave me access to all of his connections coming up in the fight world, and said, hey, here's a guy that's a specialist. I want you to go over here and connect with this guy. I'll come with you. I'll introduce you, and we'll work. After you guys work, we'll sit down and me and you will we'll go over it and take what we need to take. And, you know, we'll let go of whatever we don't need. And, you know, he used to travel. I mean, he used to kind of wake me. I lived in the dojo. I lived in his, in his gym for years. You know what I mean? And he used to wake me up early in the morning. I'm talking snow outside. I'm pushing cars, shoveling snow. Like, people don't know, man. Like, I've been through It's like a movie. I've been through it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, one day people will see and one day I'll, I'll accomplish the things we set out to accomplish. And... and People, I'll get, people get to see because I'll shine some light on all that shit, you know. But um, yeah, I'm, yeah, he's he's the man. I'm, he's the man. My coaches are the shit. Like people have no idea. Like I've been to hell and back, and I can't even speak about it. It is what it is. Yeah, the the Randy Brown documentary is gonna be, is gonna be fire, it's man. Insane. It's gonna be insane. Yeah, insane. yeah. Because uh, I know you're holding back a lot about your life, probably from from earlier days but it, there's a time to release all those things and uh i can't oh, wait man it'll be it's oh, gonna yeah. be fun it's gonna be entertaining and uh educational let's say absolutely. that absolutely um people see one thing and they kind of just they judge a book by the cover they just oh that's a, but bro still waters run deep and my my, my yeah. shit goes deep bro my shit yeah. goes deep. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's a time and a place so we'll get yeah yeah uh the the cross training you still you know are you still going down to Philly? Is that the, oh, yeah. the main spot now for you? Oh, yeah. Shout out to my guys, uh, Marquez MMA, you know, mm -hmm. another great guy. Um, you know, shout out to Keith Trimble over at Belmore Kickboxing. Shout out to all the guys, the bodies, the people who come out to help me, people at Philly, Sean Brady's, you know what I mean? The Joey Pifers, the Nershletons, the uh, uh, Andre Petrowski, who else? Um, even guys that you guys don't know yet, uh, Igor. Um, Oh, I forget. I'm forgetting a lot of people, but I was yeah. brain for. But everybody, everybody, the whole team, the whole squad, man. You know. Yeah, it's uh, it's working, and you know, what do you envision for yourself, like in your performance against Zaleski? Um, I think it's. I think I, I think I don't think he's gonna be able to touch me. He's gonna be trying to throw leg kicks, and then when that doesn't work, because it never does, he's gonna try to shoot, and I think mm -hmm. that I'm gonna be able to stop those takedowns as well, and he's gonna be forced to strike. I'm just not gonna be there. I think I pick him apart, ultimately finish him. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, man. You, you know, rising up the ranks, and you know, speaking of uh, the ranks and like the the title picture, it it all seems like the title picture is really really clear. But Bilal Muhammad is not fighting for a title. Nothing's announced. You know, what would you do if you were in the shoes of Bilal Muhammad? I don't know. I can't speak on that, bro. I don't know what. I don't know what I would have I would have did, but <laughs> hey, you know it's it's the business, bro. This game is not fair. I do believe he deserves the next shot. It is what it is. This is just a game, man. If you're not moving the needle, you're not moving the needle. It's a business ultimately, and you can't force people to you know love you. And you know I mean, even though I fuck with Below, that's my guy personally. I love Below, you know, but it's just what it is. You know what I mean? Same same with me with the rankings, bro. Like. I'm fucking, what am I, six and six and one in my last seven, I'm about to be seven and one in my last eight, and I'm unranked. That's never happened. I'm like, I can't even get in the rankings. You know what I mean? <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy, the one guy I lost to is the, is, the, is the fourth guy in the world right now, and he's, um, you know what I mean, he's the only guy that beat me. You know, he got ranked after beating me. 
<laughs> when I was unranked. Like the game, shit ain't fair. Sometimes you got to be twice as good. Be twice as good. That's life. Yeah, man. Yeah, the only losses, the last two losses are to guys that are in the top 15 for you. And you're what, like seven and two in your last nine? Maybe something like that. Some like some ridiculous, right? Yeah, it's, it doesn't make sense. But that's uh, I guess that's the attitude sometimes you got to take with it and and just yeah. march forward, right? Especially when you know you got some. So I look at a guy like Bilal. I know Bilal is good. We're no, Bilal knows he's good. Everyone knows he's mm -hmm. good. So it's like, fuck it. It's, some things are inevitable, you know what I mean? So I'm going to just keep doing what I need yeah. to do. Hey, it's a risk. You may get set back, but you are that guy. You believe that you're that guy. Mm -hmm. Even if you do get set back, you will bounce back and you'll be the spot where you're going to be at because you are that guy. You know who you are. And that's how I see it. I know yeah. who I am. I don't care. I, fans and journalists can't tell me who I am. I know the work put in. Yeah. I know what's going on in the gym. They're not there. They don't know what's going on. Some of the guys that y'all love and think is like this guy is they're getting their ass whooped by some motherfuckers that y'all don't know mm. you know what i mean or y'all think is not that guy so if you think you're that guy just keep doing you it's all it's all it's, it's uh yeah ultimately it's inevitable yeah people that are just watching it on tv they have no idea what is going on inside the gyms nope. they have no idea they have no idea like really some of the people that are in the industry they're not really who they are on camera as well that's another thing that's uh that fans don't realize either <laughs> but yeah. uh, we're not gonna get into that too much exactly. but that's, what, that's what it is, it is, what it is oh yeah yeah well ready hey ready you know i've we've spoken for a long time so like i like you're the same person that i spoke with in like what is it 2018 or 17 i don't even remember but you're the same person so i could understand like you being you um one last thing armin sarukian man ufc 300 he tried to hit a fan during the walkout, right? The fan gave him the middle finger. Um, I think it was like a natural reaction. But uh, have you ever had a, a disrespectful like moment with with a fan, like in your face? I've had a couple in my face. Oh, really? Uh, two. One, one, the guy might have just been a little off and just like, you know, mm. some people don't understand social cues. It was like in an airport. Some mm. strange people, you know what I mean? Um, you know. A lot of strange people out there, and then uh, one time, yeah, I did actually. I went to um, somebody. It was after a fight. I actually, it was a tough fight, you know, and um, I, I didn't get the win. And then I, I'm walking out the octagon, you know, obviously disappointed. And a dude stretched out his hand to me as I'm walking. He's like, because everybody's, you know, stay oh, good fight, good fight, good fight, whatever. He stretches out his hand to me, and he says, uh, and he said, like, oh, good fight, good fight. When I went to touch his hand, pulled his hand back, and then screamed. And said fuck yeah um and scream my opponent's name you know and i was just looking at him like it took everything i'm I, like for me to not to like break his neck or just break his face right there but i was just like mm. you know my coaches kind of just handled it and i just kept it pushing but it's what it is <laughs> dude people what is that yeah, what people? so when i saw that dude get punched in the face i'm like yo people but me and you spoke about this too. People move around yeah. like there's no consequences anymore because of the internet. Yeah. And it's like, bro, yeah. not everybody is like came up how you came up in a troll era and like and just mm -hmm. there's real life consequences to certain things and there's morals and principles to stand on. It's just as a man, like that was just weird, mm -hmm. you know. So too comfortable. I don't know. So please your own. Yeah, well, you know, those people they end up running into, you know, some problems and you know, things happen to them. So I don't feel sympathy towards people like that at all. Um, but man, at least you you get to fight and you're not going to get arrested. You'll be in a cage. You could get paid June 1st. You're 302 across the river in New Jersey. It's, it's going to probably be pretty nice. Hey, how many people are hitting you up for tickets? Would they man, know that you could buy tickets I'm online? Out, man, I'm trying my best. Um, everybody's hitting me up for tickets. Hey, my whole, all my people is going to be there. My whole crew is going to be there for once. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. be prepared to see flags sea of jamaican flags in the in the in the crowd i mean all my peoples i'm like all gonna be there just going crazy so i'm excited for that you know but everybody hit me for tickets too so that's a whole nother thing that i gotta that i gotta deal with but yeah working yeah. on it well what about the the shorts that we're making man they need to make some for jamaica right like Hi, that's uh, that, my shorts are usually jamaican color though the green yeah but yeah you know what i mean they give me a green, gold, black. So normally it's normally that, but like a specific special design, like for three hundred, 
we got work to do yeah. you know what i mean we got work uh -huh. to do so we'll do some work eventually we'll, we'll right. be undeniable <laughs>